Let's cook and we make fish tacos. Hi, and welcome back to Big Red's Cooking. I'm Big Red. So this week I've got a great, well, I think everything I do is great. Well, actually, no, that's a lie. Trust me, I make a lot of mistakes. I'm going to put that out there right now. You know, the only the great stuff makes it to the video. So this is another great thing. So we're going into the fall season here and now. We're back into our food fishery here in Newfoundland. I love wild food. We're in the hunting season, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to bag a moose in the coming weeks or months, depending on how long it takes. And really, I want to see myself do more and more dishes where it's food from the land. So this is what I'm doing this week. You know, so growing up here in Newfoundland, codfish, cod is king in Newfoundland. You know, the big joke is they don't call it the godfather, it's the codfather, you know, a thousand and one different things that get said about cod. But really, cod is a staple here. You know, but most people, they, you know, they pan fry it with a little bit of salt pork fat, or they do fish and chips, they might make a cod au gratin. They really don't venture too much salt codfish, a few different dishes. One of my favorite ways of eating it, and it's really been a big trend the last few years, and I'm hoping that a lot of you have actually had this before. But if not, here's something else you can add into your repertoire. We're going to do fish tacos this evening. So, you know, they're going to, there are some similarities, but there's no crunchy shell on this one. There's not no old El Paso. We're actually going to be using some soft tortilla, and we won't be using salsa, things like that. So why don't we move on over to the workbench and we can talk about it a little bit more over there. All right, so as always, whenever I'm cooking anything, I like to get me my mise en place done first. And mise en place is just one of those sort of classical kitchen terms and technically I think translates to everything in its place. But really, it's an expression we use in kitchens to talk about all the things that we're going to need. So that, include, that could include things like our knives, spatula that I've got there, I've got a fork for picking up the fish afterwards. I've got my fish out. I've got my ingredients out. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I actually assemble my ingredients in ways that I'm going to need to use them to be able to put together our fish tacos. All right, so whenever we're doing food, it's always nice to have sort of different textures and flavors and things like that. And again, with fish tacos, one of the sort of classic garnishes with this is just a little bit of shaved red cabbage. So, let's peel away some of these older leaves here. And I'm just going to take my knife and just really, really thinly just shave a little bit of this red cabbage. And the thinner we can get this, the better. There we go. So that's enough of that. And I got some of these nice little ramekins so I'll go ahead and I'll put my red cabbage in there you know that's going to give a nice texture that's going to give a, some nice bright color as well when I go to plate this up now again I love onion type flavors uh, and again this is going to another bit of a sort of a textural part but it's also going to give us some nice flavor and I've got shallots here and again shallots are just a wonderful ingredient if you haven't cooked with them before I highly, highly recommend it. And uh, they're almost like, you know, they're a member of the onion family, obviously. Uh, but they tend to have a much milder, much sweeter flavor. Uh, and when they're cooked, they tend to develop a really sort of nice nutty flavor. So again, I'm just going to do a really nice thin julienne on these. I'm going to try and get it as thin as possible. And that should be more than enough for what I'm going to need. in there and we'll just put that to the side and what you'll notice is I'm starting with ingredients that can sit around you know I always like to work with the stuff that can that's safest for sitting around for the longest periods of time get those sort of out of the way and I can push them to the side all right now a fish taco wouldn't be a fish taco without a little bit of lime and what I always find is a nice way of getting extra juice make sure that we get all that juice we want out of a lime or any of our citrus fruits for that matter. It's just give it a little bit of a squeeze ahead of time. So I'm just gonna, now I'm actually gonna be using this lime 
in a couple of different ways. So there's some lime for me to be able to put on my tacos themselves. And put that to the side. Now, fish tacos, unlike our traditional beef tacos, we tend not to use salsa and sour cream. We're actually going to make a spicy mayonnaise sauce. And this is actually going to end up being almost like a, uh, a lime and chili sauce. So all we're going to do here is just going to add a bit of mayonnaise. And I've got some of my lovely homemade hot sauce. Now you can go ahead and use any hot sauce you want, really. You know, and add as much or as little as you like. You know, you're the one that's going to eat this, not me. I like to give this a nice squeeze of lime juice. And then this is just more about turning it into a bit of a sauce consistency. We're going to add a little bit of water as well. I'm just going to take that and we're just going to give this a little blend here. Use a whisk here. Get it nice and smooth. So we can see now that's sort of a nice sauce consistency. It's not too thick, it's not too thin. And we can just put that to the side. So there you go, that's our condiments that we're going to need for our fish tacos. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually make up a spice to be able to season this fish with. Now, I like to use whole spices where possible and grind them up my mortar and pestle. If you don't have a mortar and pestle, that's okay. You know, go ahead and just use uh, regular grind stuff. So I've got some, I'm going to go with some very sort of classic traditional Mexican flavors here. Keep this very simple. We've got some cumin seeds there. I'm going to throw a little bit of chili powder into this. A little bit of my ground cayenne. A little bit of my dehydrated garlic. And of course, we're going to need a little bit of black pepper. And to finish it off, just a little bit of salt. Oh, I love grinding up cumin powder. It just gives us such a wonderful smell. And then we can see, you know, we've got a nice fine grind to our seasoning here now. So we'll just put that to the side for a moment. Okay, so a really important concept within kitchens, and I tend to edit this out of my videos a lot, but I get asked about cooking tips all the time. And I think one of the most important concepts I try and get through my students, and it's an acronym, C-A-Y-G, and it stands for clean as you go. You know, it makes your cooking process much easier for constantly cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. You know, notice I'm constantly wiping down my board when I'm working. All right, so next thing we're going to do here now is we're going to get our fish ready. So this is some nice local wild cod that I purchased earlier this year. And we're going to go with some sort of smaller tacos today. So we don't want huge big pieces because it just becomes too hard to cook and too hard to eat. So I tend to like pieces around two and a half, three inches long. And say maybe about a half inch thick. So we can see that nice sort of piece right there. And so all I did was I just sliced that loin right in half. And put that down in my glass bowl here. And that one looks pretty good. So again, I'm just all I'm doing now, just taking that loin, it's really quite thick. I'm just going to slice it right in half, and now I've got that sort of nice size piece that'll be easy to wrap up in a taco shell. And that's all that's to that. Nothing too complicated here yet. All I'm going to do now is give my hands a quick wash. 
And I'll give a little plug for the video I did earlier this week all about hand washing techniques. If you haven't watched that yet, I'll link to that one for sure. All right, so all we're going to do now is just going to sprinkle a little bit of this seasoning right over the top of this fish. All right, so our fish is ready to go. So really the only thing we have to do now is to cook this fish and to heat up our tortillas. So I'm going to go ahead and get my burner turned on here. And I'm even, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my center burner here as well. Because I really like heating my tortillas right on the griddle. I find it's a little bit nicer. Now, you can go ahead and heat them in the microwave if you want. But there's just something about heating them on a hot, dry surface that I find ends up making them so much nicer. So we're going to want a fairly hot pan for this. So I'm going to give this pan a few moments to heat up. And while that's heating, I'm going to put away a few things. All right, so I can feel my pan's getting nice and warm here now. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a nice little sprinkle of oil. I don't want to deep fry this, but I definitely want to make sure I've got enough oil in my pan so that that fish is going to cook. So what we want to hear is that nice sizzle when we put our stuff in. Now here's a little trick, you know, we've got those lovely shallots. We take one or two of these and just sort of drop them in and I can hear that sizzle. I know that pan is nice and hot there now and it's, it's going to allow my fish to cook a little bit better. And if our pan wasn't quite hot enough, we wouldn't be getting that sizzle and then our fish is actually a little bit more likely to stick. Just going to go ahead and you hear that nice sizzle there. Now it's really important not to overload a pan and one of the reasons why I love cooking in cast iron that cast iron tends to retain its heat much better because if we put too much in our pan at one time and then it gets cool we're not going to get the it's not going to cook the way we want it to cook. So in the meantime I can feel that my griddle is nice and warm so I'm going to go ahead and start heating up some tortillas. And I've just got you know nice six inch ones here. And again you don't have a griddle like I do here go ahead and use a skillet. If you don't have an extra skillet go ahead pop them in the microwave for a moment. We're not looking to brown or crisp up our tortilla at all. We're just trying to heat them. So we just want them warm. You might notice that they'll start to puff a little bit in some sometimes. And that's okay, but they'll get so much softer and tender when we do them this way. And what I like to do is to take them, when I take them off, is just sort of wrap them in a little bit of cloth, and that tends to hold the moisture in and hold the heat in. So we can do these in batches. Let's go ahead and start flipping some of this cod over. Now, I'm going to turn my heat off at this point because I definitely do not want that codfish overcooking. There we go. So my tortillas are all nice and heated. My codfish is finished pretty much here. So we can go ahead and assemble some of these now. So the assembly of these is really, really, you know, there's not much to it. I'm going to do a whole bunch all at one time. I'm just going to take a little bit of our sauce, drizzle that, just put a little splash of that right onto our tortilla shell. A little bit of our red cabbage here. Of course, a few of our shallots.
Now there's so many different variations on this and I'll talk about some of them when I write it up. But there's a lot of other really sort of classic garnishes. Radishes are really popular, really thinly sliced. You could do your, you could actually pickle onions. Uh, a lot of people love guacamole or just sort of slices of avocado. All right, so we'll just go ahead and a little bit of our fish right on in. and a couple of these and make them a little bit bigger. We'll break this last piece in half. Oh, it had other plans for me. That's fine. And then of course, gotta have a little lime juice right on the fish itself. And there we have our fish tacos. We just gotta fold these up down, drop them right on our plate. And voila. Oh, these fish tacos are just smelling absolutely wonderful. I'm just getting that beautiful smell from that cumin. I'm getting those, you know, getting a little of that garlic coming through, things like that. So why don't we go ahead and try one of these? Mm. Oh, I know chewing is just great TV for you guys, but you know what? It's so tasty. You know, we get that crunch from the the cabbage, and there's uh, that sort of earthiness in there, getting those really nice sweet notes and a little bit of that bitterness from the uh, the shallots themselves. Right. Some spiciness, some saltiness from our seasoning. The cod itself is really sort of sweet, a little bit of sweet undertone from the tortillas themselves. And again, all brought together with that lime juice to give us that acid. It really has that full flavor punch. And we're hitting pretty much all those notes that we're looking for when we're eating. So you can see this was a really simple thing to do. These work great as an appetizer. Go ahead and have a salad with this or some french fries and all of a sudden you've got yourself a great meal. So something really simple, really easy you can add into. It's a way of using up some of that codfish you've got there. Maybe you want to try something a little bit different. And you never know. Any of you who have kids out there trying to have, you're having some issues getting them to eat their codfish, this might do it for them because they get to play with their hands. So as always, I really hope you did enjoy this video. I really like making these things. You know, if you did enjoy it, I'm gonna ask you, as always, hit like. I'm gonna ask you, as always, to subscribe. I know some of you guys are subscribers, but there are definitely people who are watching and you haven't subscribed yet. So hit that subscribe button down below for me. Please share this on your social media feeds. Keep an eye on my Instagram to find out what's going on at Big Red's Cooking. Keep checking out my website, bigredscooking.ca. Keep tuning back and keep making yourselves some great food. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now. <music>